But as we do that, and um, w w what would you have to say about that, um, George AC? The economy seems to be top of the issues yeah. for which will be the key benchmark. And then subsequently, we have education, infrastructure, health. And yeah, thank you. Transparency, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, it's important. Good morning. Yeah, good I hope morning. that he hasn't unsettled you. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, great, great. Come on. great He's my brother. He's my brother. Okay, okay. Please go ahead. And, and yeah, good morning to you. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to Council Head Uji Tamo Club. Uh, I, I thought he would rather be excited he was able to get uh, the High Court in Second D to get uh, his candidate, you know. Uh, back in the race. Congratulations, you did a good Thank job. You. Yeah, so uh, let's come to the matter. Uh, President Kufo once said, uh, You get it. Assess your own. Um, you said living. President Kufo once said what? Yeah, you get it. So when you're going to the polls, you assess your situation, and then based on that, you make a determination. It is uh, true, even what do you think today. is the situation of Ghanaians for good, which they need good. to take a look? There are surveys over there. Uh, Musa Dankwa has come out, you've interviewed him, and he said economy is one of the key pointers that uh, voters are going to look at, and that is, is very key to everybody. Every politician knows the economy is, is the crux of the matter. And then he talks about job and he talks about education, okay, and then the other. So these are the top three uh, areas that people are going to look at. Uh, this government, when we took over uh, the management of this economy, yes, we have said it, the first three years, our performance uh, was very good, averaging about 7% GDP growth. And then uh, COVID struck, and then uh, 2022 happens to be the lowest point in, in, in our administration. Uh, but that notwithstanding, we've braced ourselves and then uh, been able to put measures in place. We got into an engagement with the IMF and then that is released uh, about three billion, which about three chunks have been uh, released as of now. Uh, we still meeting the benchmarks and everything, uh, qualifying for the releases. Uh, so based on those things, uh, you know, the finance minister has come out to tell us that we have actually turned the corner and then we, the economy is rebounding. Uh, this is on the trail of the fact that first quarter of 2024, uh, growth was about 4.3%, and then second, or 4.8%, and the second quarter is about 6.9%. Half year growth is about 5.9%, uh, which is uh, good pointers. And, and projections are that by the end of the year, growth is going to hit about 4%. Initial projections was about 2.8%. Okay, so these are good signals that uh, something is being done right. And, and that is, is comforting. Even that, uh, people complain from the survey, from when we're listening to people on the ground, that things are hard, they talk about uh, prior cost of items and, and all that. But in the midst of all these things, uh, government is able to uh, uh, get salaries of workers paid consistently. Government is able to get uh, fuel available on the markets. Things are going. The economic management system is going. There are places where some of these things have resulted in full shortages, uh, then uh, payment of salaries being delayed and all that. Which part of okay. Ghana? No, I'm not talking about well, around the world. Yes, around the world. Some places, you know, had those challenges. But in the midst of all these difficult situations, this government is able to put measures in place. Resilient releases are going on. Infrastructure development is going, even though some have been halted, most of them are still ongoing. Uh, we speak. And so uh, that's, that's something that is comforting uh, to the Guinean. On the uh, front of jobs, it's also a situation that this election, we know the youth are many, and, and you cannot go to them uh, without talking about possibilities of opportunities you are going to put in place for them. And, and Dr. Baumia has talked about the uh, but before that one, the Youth Employment Agency has been doing training, skills training and call for the young people. And then going into 2024, we are looking at uh, the possibility of the IT uh, training for about one million young people. It's, it's something that I'm excited about. If India did that deliberate policy 
of training their people uh, in the IT arena. And as we speak, Roland, they've taken over the IT system in the, in the world, especially in the United States. They lead it, you get it, because it was a deliberate government policy. So I was excited. Uh, Dr. Baumia has also made positive that it's going to roll out that deliberate policy uh, for our young people going into 2024. The issue again of, of uh, uh, the taxes, e-levy and, and betting tax. Some have made the argument that why is it that we are in power? And we are saying when we win power, we're going to take You think it's a legitimate question? Yes, it is. It is. You think you, uh, the yes. vice president as head of the economic management team could have done something about it? No, I'm it? coming to that. You get it. It is a legitimate question. The answer is it's because of the exigencies of the moment. Okay. What are the exigencies? The exigencies of, the of we've gone the economic dip that we had. You know, you remember we did DDEP, the banking sector, and all that. And then we had the banking sector. Don't forget, they were collapsed in 2015, State of the Nation, addressed by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. He acknowledged that he some, collapsed banks, the banking sector. some banks were in distress. He mentioned eight or nine banks. In fact, he didn't end there. He advanced resources to support them to get them back on their feet. Unfortunately, they misapplied them. Okay, And so when we came in, we thought, no, there's need for complete radical revitalization of the banking system. Otherwise, it's going to collapse like a pack of cars. And if your banking system is not functioning, you don't have any economy. You get it. And so these are the issues that led us to get the way we have. And we have done the consolidation. We've done uh, the other support that we need to give them. The banks are now posting some positive profit. So the exigencies of the moment require that we get some revenue support. You get it. And that is how come we brought these e-levy and the uh, other tax. And we are saying, when we come back, we will, you know, take them off. Because I don't understand. You brought a tax yes. which people are complaining about. No. The very people yes. in the service. Yes. yes. And they say so, take it off. And you say that unless yes. I'm elected. No. So we, we need it now to fill some gaps. You get it. And so if you're able to stabilize the system as we speak, I've told you half-year growth is about 5.9, which is very positive. You get it. And so if we're able to do that, that we say, okay, now A, B, C, D, we've been able to plug those ones, and the stream of revenues we are uh, uh, envisioning uh, is, is, you know, going up, and there's hope going into the future. Then we realign and then re-strategize and move on. That is why we, I said the exigencies of the moment demanded that. You get it. And so uh, uh, going forward, we've talked about flat rate and all that. All bother on economy. Last one. Uh, sometimes I, I shudder to comprehend why people think there's no nexus between digitalization and the economy. I, I, I don't understand. Who has said there's no nexus? No, no, there's, the people say we have not, our candidate is moved from the economy to uh, digitalization. Are you saying that it's a wrong, is there a wrong assertion there? Yes, making? it's wrong. No, is it not if true? you want to have a proper I didn't economy, bring that. You are bringing yes, this up. Yes. Why is it not you true? You need that. that, is it not that true? There's a nexus between the two. Mr. George, yes, is yes, it not yes, true? Yes, go. It, that even from 2008, yeah. when Dr. Mahmoud Baumia yes. was chosen as the oh, yes, vice presidential yes, yes, candidate, yes, 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 yes. ran up to 2012, yes. prior to the 2016 general elections, the president now, who was then the opposition leader, yes, yes. did say that the one to resolve our economic conundrum yes. is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Yes. Indeed, prior to 2019, 2020, he had touted, for example, yes. at various fora or forums yeah. that Ghana had the best economic management team led yes. by him, yes. as well as others who yes. were members. Yes, yes. Two, he had yes. arrested the dollar. Yes. The key was even given to the IGP. Of course, that at the time wasn't occupied by Dr. Dampari. And subsequently, he said that borrowing was not bad because even though he had said that in opposition, yeah. They were able to manage other key indicators of the economy. And so that made borrowing very good. And that even in 2020, when we had COVID, that it was the first time across the West African subregion as well as other global areas like ours, that a situation, a pandemic like COVID, had been well managed by any country. And he took credit for that. Why is it now that when he's been called out for not holding himself to be the Messiah to resolve our economic difficulties. You are saying that people are saying that he's running to digitalization. No, so I'm saying the two are interlinked and intertwined, you see, as far as economic management is concerned. And, and I asked you, has anybody said they no. are not? Oh, yeah, yeah, 
Yes, people are. Well, I've had His Excellency John Dramani Mahama say he, uh, Vice President has moved away from the economy and is now on because digitalization. Because he said that he yes, and I'm saying the economic they're too, messiah. They're too work. And I, I am telling you, the presence of Dr. Baumia has actually saved us. And, and but for that, I think our situation would have been worse. Some of the figures we look at, the issue of, of, of forex availability, okay, and the issue of gold purchase uh, uh, program that is being run by this uh, government. Bank of Ghana has over $5 billion reserve of gold purchase, okay? And, and, you know, these are issues that we need to look at. And then, you know, the gold for oil issues that we're using. All these things have actually helped us in the management of the forex, okay? Maybe we would have been worse than where we are, okay? There are some data and figures that you look at and you say, wow, if, if certain things had not been put in place, uh, Roland, uh, things would have been uh, worse than what we have. Now. Adiji, things could have been worse. We have DDEP, even yes. external creditors who have had to take a lot of haircuts externally. Uh, we've had difficulties in managed bread and butter issues. I'm sure the dollar could have been how, how much? It's now 70. You say it could have been how much? I say it could have been worse. Mm. We don't know. So what rate? Yes. Do you think the dollar would have been rate, okay. yeah. Yeah. The, the situation could have been worse. Yeah, because I, maybe I, we I, get I, figures I, to support mm, the, the I mean, depreciation issues under, that's the under JM. Yeah, this, yeah, this what morning, we have now. My brother. John, the Kung Fu is playing ostrich. Of course. Can you imagine that? First seven, the survey, first seven issues. It doesn't include exchange rate. No, economy. Go economy. Go 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 all right, gentlemen. No, but he cannot be doing this with Economy. Who confuse the economy? I'm a mathematician. I speak to data. All right, oh, yes, let's okay. go. Let's go. Ah, all right. I don't see. Okay, okay. Mister, 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 you see? Do you agree? Do you agree? Debt to GDP. Debt. The indicators. Debt to GDP ratio. Both on the policies. Let's say monetary policy, fiscal policy, they are embedded in the economy. Do you agree? Of, of course, okay. of course. So of course, the of course. depreciation, debt to GDP, yes, the, of course. Uh, you see, the 17th and the city, they are all part of Yes, all right. of all the now, now three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Do, do you think that the solutions that are being preferred by your candidate yes. will resolve the problems that he imposed on Ghanaians? I.e., debt to GDP going to 700 and over 60 no, billion. The debt to GDP uh, rate is about 71.6. Yeah, well, I understand. Yes. In terms of the level of yes, debt, as, as not, uh, and then the, the rate being yes. as it is. It moves from 57. It even went to over 100 percent. Wait. It even went Some to. Some people are at 24 percent. From 33 to 57. It even went to 100 percent. So you are saying 56 percent. It's worse than... No, 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 I'm saying... So what are you saying? It, look, okay. listen, let's do the analysis. If you took so, so the basic GDP, question I asked you... See, you uh, Edward G said something. Uh, the the business said, man, 100,000... Okay, finish your question. I understand. Finish your question. Do you finish think that the solutions that are being yes. preferred yes. by Dr. Mahmoud Obama yes. will remain the ultimate panacea to take us from the problems that he put Ghanaians in? He put Ghanaians in, fine, he's part of the government, that's good. You see, we spoke, he spoke about the exchange rate matters. When they took over, when President Kufo was leaving, a businessman at Abu with $100,000 had 100,000, 100,000 CDs had $100,000, true or false? Worth $80,000, 1.2, if we want to make it that way. And that same businessman from that 100,000 moved under President Mahama, he claims $25,000. How much? $175,000 lost under the administration of Mills Mahama. Okay, that's a businessman. And now you're claiming it's about $7,000 in cool. How much have you lost from $25,000 to $7,000? That's, that's a businessman. Let's look at that, okay? In the effect of exchange rate depreciation on the business person. Okay, so these are matters that we need to be looking at. Debt to GDP uh, issues are very important. Okay, that's why we look at the. I, in, from the beginning, I told you the growth of first uh, quarter, second quarter, and half year growth. Okay, and the projections that we are making uh, end year growth. That's very important. We have stabilized the system, and we say the economy is rebounding. Hence the figures, IMF and others projecting about 2.8% growth. We are saying now it's likely to hit 4% growth. 
because of the data we are looking at. So these are matters that we know is going to have. Uh, Dr. Baumia is projecting going into uh, the next election. We are looking at things that, you know, will help bring the economy back on its feet. He's made the supposition of getting the private sector partnership, PPP. <laughs> Hence, his commitment to 3% of GDP for the private sector to, you know, projects and others. For instance, uh, road infrastructure, school infrastructure, hospital infrastructure. <laughs> this government has constructed over 47 hospitals from the scratch and completed several, several. I'm leaving Agenda 111 and its effects on the people road infrastructure and all that. That 3% is going to help somebody like my brother Nobi. Nobi has a car rental uh, if he has something like that. The, press, the, the, the vice president is saying going forward, instead of the state purchasing the VAs and, and those uh, vehicles for ministers and co, they're going to rent it from Nobi rentals, okay? And then the maintenance and everything will be the responsibility of uh, Nobi rental. That it's the way we are going. Hence, the three percent of GDP commitment in this private sector that is going to bolster the private sector, inject revenue uh, resources therein for them to be able to push, and then tax issues will be coming. He's talked about flat rate of taxes and, and tax amnesty for people who have, for one reason or the other, evaded tax or whatever. He says there's going to be a tax amnesty for you. Thereafter, we're going to have flat rate tax for business people and, and the excitement in the business community as far as these issues uh, are concerned. This government is also focused on road infrastructure. We have done a lot of road infrastructure than any government. 12,830 kilometers and counting, okay, compared to uh, 4,636 kilometers, somebody who claims he's master of infrastructure. You get it. Hospital infrastructure, massive. That is what we're doing. Then the education, that's the star of the moment. The education sector that they're talking about, okay? I'm reading some things that this uh, spy something, the investigation will give us some details because Food and Drugs Authority have weighed in. And, and there are some facts that, you know, show different from what to quit to a black or honorable is, is positive, okay? So let's get the details of the matter hereafter. Then we'll get to know the facts of the what matter. What are the details? You get we it. So have, don't worry. Uh, we have paper trails and, yes, and yes, video yes. evidence so that's what, available. What I'm getting is that to the point FDA that was involved in the matter. And whatever happened to the repackaging... Are you saying that the FDA invest, allowed... No, no. no. Are you saying the FDA say, allowed said, for expired rice to be repackaged or whatever and sent to schools FDA, across the country? FDA has something to tell all of us, and they have their report. As you're saying, paper trail. So those things will be made available as time, with time, with the investigation. And education, you know, this government is actually... We had a government that district directors of education didn't even have vehicles to move around. Second supervisors didn't have vehicles, Okay. What are you talking about? Teachers work and 36 months, they are, now paid, they are paid for three months. Nanado came to, you know, pay off all these arrears, okay? We've got vehicles for all these education directors. Besides that, we brought free education for the masses of the Ghanaian people, okay? And then we are talking allowances. President Mahama couldn't sustain it, okay? And we are talking, he doesn't even believe in the success of the. Then the STEM project, the darling of Dr. Duchum and, and, and the team in education. STEM education, STEM schools, one. And, and you see, I saw Kwaku and Ho and Ko praising Nanado for you has. Okay? President Kufo said it yesterday that sometimes you say, oh, did we start establish this. He developed and made it a complete university. U, U, UDS, okay, infrastructure, University of Education, Winima, my own institution. He provided a lot of infrastructure. You, you, Max, and others. President Kufour did a lot. You see, you have named it. You don't leave it like that. You see, I went to, uh, 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 yes, uh, Tamale Technical some time ago. I tell you, when I was walking there, I thought I was in a primary school. You get it? So please, round in up, my brother. The Alam people sometimes, you know, uh, they speak as if, as he said, I was in the trenches with him, okay? We all worked together. Today he feels, no, uh, he disagrees and he's joined uh, his, because they couldn't win the primary, so uh, they, they want to chart their own path. We wish them all the best. But we believe that the message our candidate is carrying is going around selling, 
okay, is resonating with the people, and we are upbeat and confident that this election, Adige. Nana, uh, <laughs> Dr. Baumia is going to win hands down. Adige. One touch. For, Adige, you uh, have uh, made mention of the 24 hour, etc. And then 